I mean, imagine a world in which everything is now connected. Uh, so not just you and your smartphone, I'm talking about trucks connected to pallets, connected to packaging, connected to products, uh, connected to these drones that are now going to be delivering things from the sky. Now don't panic. This isn't real. It's just CGI. Uh, Amazon are not delivering by drone. Uh, that starts next month, apparently. So, so you've got some time. So if you look at it, right, so these retailers are investing massive amounts of money in building these smart warehouses now. Now, is all of this technology just about giving you things faster than before? Well, the question we, are, we need to ask ourselves, whether it's in any field of endeavor, is what is now possible that wasn't possible before? Why are Amazon and Ocado and Alibaba doing all of this? You see, I think what they're trying to do is to anticipate your needs before you've had to ask. Take Amazon. Have any of you ever ordered something and been shocked that it was in stock and on Amazon Prime? I used to, uh, I used to think there was this Indiana Jones warehouse somewhere with everything ever made by human beings waiting to be shipped out, right? So, you know, you had peanut butter next to lithium batteries, next to the Ark of the Covenant, right. one only. And I discovered I was actually completely wrong. I came to Seattle to do a session for Amazon once, and uh, I was shocked to discover that in many cases, the item that you order is not in stock until a few days before you order. You see, an algorithm predicts that you are going to order that item. So they preemptively send it to a fulfillment center near where they think you're going to be. So in order for it to arrive to you on time, it's had to enter the supply chain before you knew you wanted it. Now think about that. At what point does Amazon just start sending you packages before you order them? I know it's weird, right? They've got a patent on it. They call it anticipatory shipping. I call it freaky as hell shipping. Because can you imagine, you're going to be home one day, and I don't know, you're kind of working, I mean shopping, and uh, you're about to order something, and you, you, you're just about to click buy now, but you never get there because suddenly you're distracted by this whirring noise outside your house, right? What the hell is that? And then you see this, you know, black and yellow drone descending from the sky and drops this package in on, at your feet. And you go, that's weird, I, I didn't order anything. So you go to open it up, and you look inside, and you immediately drop it to the ground because there inside was the very thing you were just looking at a second ago. How did they know? Alexa. You'll be like a crazy person, like, you know, running around the house and plugging all your smart speakers, you know? I know, some of you are just going to send it back to show Jeff Bezos, who's boss. Yeah? And then a few days later, you have to order it again because they were right. You needed that stuff. I mean, your kids are going to be looking at you like you're insane. But, but this is the point. In this new algorithmic age, the game is how do you use data to understand people's behavior, to anticipate their needs before they've had to even ask. And this is starting to happen in places like China. I mean, they're, they're so far ahead. They've got fully automated convenience stores like 7-Elevens on steroids. They use facial recognition and algorithms to restock themselves and merchandise. I mean, they've got robot hotels and robot restaurants and you know, even smart home collection devices that expand when you have deliveries. Even the beggars in the street don't want coins anymore. They've got QR codes. They want you to donate straight to their smartphones. Cash is so 2017 in China. The reason why I'm bringing this up is that you can see we're already at the beginnings of a fundamental transition to a different kind of world with a different way of living. And that's going to change not just our interactions, but the way we interface with technology.